YouTube by now. Uh, we welcome you. My name is Beverly Malden, and I am the pastor here at Gold Hill Methodist Church in Gold Hill, North Carolina. And we would love to know how to pray for you. And if this is your first time joining us, uh, just let us know where you're from and how we best can pray for you. <clears throat> and for all that are here, we welcome you back to worship. Um, it's, it's been a great week. We had great um, Founders Day last week. That seems like that was a year ago, but it was just a week ago. But uh, we, we uh, appreciate you being with us this morning. We welcome you into the house of the Lord where we are going to worship and praise His holy name this morning. There's a few things I want to lift up to you. If you notice around the altar, we have boxes. It is that time of year again, and you're all lucky because Easton and Ellie Jo stayed after church last week and folded them all up, and I hope they got a slip in every box. If you get a box and it doesn't have a slip in it, I have extra, so let me know. And um, if you got here early enough, you got to meet a new friend of mine who we met at Founders Day here, and <clears throat> she is, um, I don't know what that, anyway, she is, she's kind of in charge of Samaritan's Purse for this area, and I had already uh, emailed Samaritan's Purse to, to get some details for this year, because last year I let it go by and, I, and we were late and we just didn't get to participate last week. Anyway, her name is Carlene Bean. She goes to the Antioch Baptist Church out on Stokes Ferry. Uh, her son-in-law was the pastor there. And she gave us more boxes. She has given us a lot of um, uh, flyers and paperwork. So if there's anything you, you need that, that's not in the box or it's not, there should have been some flyers by your uh, bulletin this morning. The, and that, and if, the only thing is don't pay any attention to that date. Um, because I need the boxes back by November 5th, that Sunday, uh, so that I can get them to her. The, the collection point, there's a collection place in Rockwell. So I just need that week to, so anyway, just, just ignore the date on the flyer. Pay attention to the date that's in your bulletin so that I have time to get the boxes to where they need to go. Um, I think that's the biggest announcement that I needed to make this morning. Uh, many of you know as a um, result of what's going on that I will be moving in a different direction for December 31st, and I hope we're all going to get I am definitely moving in a different direction, and this weekend um, I'm going to send out a link if anybody wants to watch it, but your pastor will be down Saturday morning. I am in the last of my three classes. I actually turned in my last assignment for one of those classes last night, so I'm down now, um, but I'm the road, and, and I'm very appreciative of all the support that I have gotten from all of y'all for all of this awkward time of ministry that we have been in, and it has been very awkward. But I, th I think I think we think we 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 have surpassed all the evil, and we've not let it. Down. And I think we can claim that victory in Jesus. And um, I'm, I'm just just all smiling about everything for Gold Hill going forward. I think that I've got everything in the bulletin as far as community events. Uh, does, is there anything missing from the bulletin that needs to be announced this morning? I know Donna has an announcement. Mm -hmm. Because they're just up the road and so we 
dead by them are our neighbors. And so we ask that the month of October you focus on supporting them through our church and um, in your offering, if you want to add or place a separate check, just be sure to know that it's for the food pantry or FCWC, Freedom Christian, just whatever, a small notation, and Bill will see that it is um, put in the right area and we take a check to them uh, at the end of the month. So our focus this month is Freedom Christian Worship Center. And our goal is? Well, we, we usually, we don't really set a goal. Uh, we have certainly uh, sent, taken $600 uh, plus. And so if we exceed our goal, that's just even better. <coughs> but whatever you are led to give, that's what we want to do. And that's what we appreciate. Thank, Thank you. you. Are there any? Vivian? Of course, we, I know you probably already mentioned, but we need to keep track of the prayers. three weeks and um, we're hoping that he's coming home tomorrow but he's going to be coming home with lots of medicines and um, there will be a bluegrass shindig down the road and we will be taking up donations to offset some of his medical and if any of you want to help um, you can go on Facebook and look up Troy Revis and you'll see who we're talking about uh, he's just a great man and Gold Hill's very black. And Don might not put a goal. When I first came here almost nine years ago, we were we 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 were just cat food and dog food and people food. And then we learned about the palate and that we could get more food by just giving money instead of us going to the store and bringing stuff and um, so we started buying pallets and I I remember that that two, the pallets were two hundred dollars a pallet and so we wanted to buy a whole pallet for them and I don't know what year that was that was maybe five or six years ago but we now are two and a half pallets and so last year we set our goal at five hundred dollars and as Donna said we exceeded that and so if you want to send a gift in for the food you can call that to post office box 52 Highway 52 Hill North Carolina two eight zero 71 is the zip code um, and Bill will get the money and he will add just put in the memo for food pantry and Bill will know where that, that goes uh, and we do appreciate all of our online gifts that we uh, I ever thought we would we are keeping our keeper in prayer but the children went home Friday night seemed to be enough <laughs> and um, she she did good yesterday 
And she told me last night she was going to try to go to church this morning. So that's pretty good. Just two weeks out of surgery. It'll be two weeks tomorrow. I think days were the worst. They, it was really hard. And um, then she had some tubes taken out and that made it a little bit easier. But keep um, there on the back of the and Zeb is doing okay. I don't know if you were here or if I told you, but he did get his license for one more year. So pray for the roads of Gold Hill and pray for Zeb because he would never want to hurt anyone in that car. We are really happy for Mark. We've prayed for Mark for a long time, and I think this is, I think we're seeing God's goodness and answers unfolding before us. Uh, I also, they had a, a pretty rowdy party for him Friday night, and <laughs> so um, anyway, Mark, if you're listening, we are very happy for you, and happy birthday. If there are, are there any prayer requests? Final charge conference is on. Now, has that Zoom thing been sent out to everybody? Or do I need to send that out? Okay. So if you do not have the Zoom link, uh, let me or Jane know. At 6.30, we need to all be on our computers charge me uh, of disaffiliation. I did forget this morning. Uh, just a report from our Bible study groups. We were doing a 11 part in last night we covered how Jesus is in every single part of the church. There's a special piece of art that we put up uh, that has his name, all of his names all through scripture, which is really special. And Dave is always so good at getting that posted on the church YouTube channel. By the way, it's already up this morning. This next Saturday night, it's on the Lord's Prayer, and a real deep dive into the Lord's Prayer. So anybody that wants to join, either online or come, and, uh, and then all, this, all the things are recorded for, from the past that you're able to look back. Well, we really appreciate your faithfulness to Saturday nights and the Bible study. I know, I know we've enjoyed, I know enjoyed and have benefited from uh, your teachings and, and the Bible study. So we do thank you for that. Is there anything else? Is Bill okay? Okay. All righty. Well, there was a wedding here yesterday, and everything's not where it belongs. Um, if you're able, will you stand, and let's call in the Holy Spirit and open up the worship with, um, with our call to worship. Stand up. 174. <laughs>
in the day. Today is from Philippians. Uh, if you have your Bibles, I will be reading from 1, and I will be starting at verse 20. It's my eager expectation and hope that I will not be put to but by my speaking, by life, faithful labor for me, and I. I'm hard pressed between the two. My. flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting of Jesus Christ when I come to you again. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And if you will... On 881 for our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived in the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead, and he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Let's go to God in prayer. Oh, Holy Father, thank you for this another day, another chance to come together with sisters and brothers and worship your holy name. Another day to see your goodness, to enjoy your gifts and your grace. Help, help us, Lord, to be thankful for all the goodness that you bestow upon each and every one of us this day. Help us, Lord, to be in constant, mindful prayer. In, in, in an attitude of prayer as we go through our day so that we can be mindful of you and mindful of your people. Help us to love one another better. Help us to be more eager to work for you and to be more like you. Help us, oh Lord, <clears throat> to, to be still, to be quiet and to hear your words and to understand the next best step for us to take. Father, you know that our church is doing our best to stay faithful to you. And we know that you have blessed us because of the faithfulness. And I thank you, Lord, that you have not taken your hand 
off of Gold Hill, that you have not turned your back on your people, that we are not walking through a wilderness wondering where we're going to wake up the next day. Your plan is very clear to be more like you, to think more like you, to try to be more Christ-like. Help us, Lord, to pray more and mean it when we say, Thy will be done. Because, God, we know that when we pray with expectation of answers and miracles, that they will come because you are a promise-keeping God. Father, we have all sinned at some point this week. And we ask that you forgive us of our sins. We ask that you wash us whiter than snow so that when we leave here today, we will have less burdens on us than when we walked in. I ask you, God, I th give thanks for the joy that Mark is walking through now. And I ask you, Father, to be with them as they go on this trip and to keep them safe and bring them back home safe and renewed with, with um, an eager desire to, to be more like you. I ask you, Father, to be with Troy. And, and we thank you that for the medical team that has been taking care of him, his friends that have supported him. And we just ask you, Father, that if it's your will that he gets to come home and he gets to enjoy the, the bluegrass that's going to be in his field this weekend. And Father, we're just so thankful that he is well enough to be able to return home and that they're actually having these conversations. And Father, we ask, we give, give thanks and praise for Lindsay's journey. She has walked through this past year like a trooper. And she finally got to go get a haircut this week. And she looks so cute. And Lord, the Malden family is very grateful for the blessings and the mercy that you have shown our family. And we ask, Father, that you be with Trish, that she will still be comforted by the Holy Spirit, because now it's very quiet in her home. And she took care of Carl. He was her life. And we thank you, God, for getting her through this journey but we ask the Holy Spirit to remain with her because this is a hard time. And we, many of us, understand that. <clears throat> Lord, we ask that you bring peace upon this country as we go into our quadrennial year of bickering and fighting and mudslinging. We really just need to come together, Lord. And, and we really need for you to shed your grace on us once again. And get us through all of this. And help us to know what to do. And we do ask leaders, whoever they may be next year, as we go to the ballot box, Lord, guide us. May your will be done and not our will. Lord, we just need you to raise up good leaders to take care of this country so we can take care of one another. We should not have to be given money to, pray, to food pantries. That there should be a way that we can take care of one another and that people can get out of the hard situations they're in. God, I just ask that every person that's hungry today, that you find them something to eat, whether it is 
here in Gold Hill or Rowan County or in America in the Appalachian Mountains or on the streets or even in the other countries, these shoe boxes are going to be going to some hungry people. And Lord, help us to pack them with, with things that will bring a smile to the children's face and help us to find a way to take care of the children better. Our children and the children that will never know the life that we have led. For Lord, for having so much when so many have so little. We come to you now, God, for just a moment to ask for forgiveness for our personal sins, to lift up those that have not been lifted this morning but are, have been laid on our hearts. Bring it all to you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And God, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples and passed down to each one of us and that we're going to be studying next Saturday night the best prayer of all, our Lord's Prayer, our Father, who art... a little bit differently and since I've been here we have always done homecoming at 11 o'clock and we've had a special speaker this year we do not have a special speaker we're doing homecoming a little bit different and since you're going to actually have an ordained pastor we're going to have our worldwide communion next Sunday instead of this Sunday and what I need to know from the people that are going to be working do we want to have our homecoming at 930 or do we want to have it at 11 as we usually have I know I'm throwing this out just off the bat but and, the, and if you want to think about it and tell me after church that's fine or if y'all want to huddle up you can t let me know well Max said he was bringing chicken and dumplings he did now you said you were bringing chicken and dumplings because I said, are you going to make sure that happens? And you said, yes. <laughs> so does that change anything? Carolyn doesn't have to play next week. Amanda's playing. So... We, we don't have bluegrass next week. <laughs> breathe, breathe. You didn't forget anything. <laughs> we're we're going to keep it in an hour. The hymn sing and communion. <laughs> with his chicken and dumplings okay we we will just plan to meet it later. details later does that sound good okay and that'll give you time to get to the store we meet it no what if we meet at 10 30 and have lunch at 11 30 and then you store on time
10.30? Okay. Homecoming's at 10.30 instead of 9.30, and then you can eat and then get to the store on time. Okay. All right. Now, will one of our ushers come forward? <laughs> Will you pray with me and for me? May the meditations of all of us and may the words of my mouth be acceptable to you. Amen. So what are we going to choose? What do we 
think of when we first wake up? What choices, what do we base our choices on throughout the day? I know we've all been faced with choices, but there's some choices that none of us were able to make. None of us had any choice about being born. None of us had any choice about who our family is. And uh, none of us had any choice about a century or what era we were going to live in. I'm not sure any of us would have chosen this particular point in time to be going through. But the choosing to begin. And, and when that choosing does begin, we're going to use all the circumstances that we were born into, everything that we inherited, everything that was given to us, that's what has made us what we are today. And we're going to use all those things to make the choices that we make today. But then again, sometimes the choice is not ours to make. I mean, you, you all know this in 1784, Ben Franklin wrote a letter to his daughter expressing how grieved he was about the poor choice that the American government had made by selecting the bald eagle to be our national bird. He wanted it to be the turkey. And I'm so glad they didn't listen to him. Some choices have consequences than a turkey or an eagle. There was once a student nurse that came into a hospital room to give her 79-year-old patient a shot, and she asked him, which hip do you prefer? And he looked at her, and he said, yours, honey. I know I was that nurse. In our Christian life, choosing is important. If, if, if you've ever heard of this before, the Alaskan Canadian Highway, uh, it's, it's called Alcan. I, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. I've only seen it in writing. It, it was built just as a supply route during World War II, but it's well known for its primitive roads because, you know, when you're just trying to get one tank to the other side of the border, you, you don't really need a nice paved road. So it, it was. Uh, it, it was it was not it was like some of the roads here in Gold Hill. It was not the best you could drive on, and and it had a lot of long and lonely stretches. Well, in the 1960s, it was all gravel, and and it was a, a challenge. They they did finally put on the muddy road, but it was a challenge that only the boldest driver of 18 rig truck would want to face. Maybe it was one of those dirt bikes or something. There's actually a sign on the border when you cross it, and it reads, Choose your rut carefully. You will be in it for the next 200 miles. Some are for a lifetime. Some are for 200 miles. So choose your rut carefully, my friends. Paul that wrote our scripture this morning, we all know he had a lot of ruts in him. He had a lot of hard choices in front of him. Or it would have been for me. I don't know about you, but I know the choices he had to make. It would have been hard for me to make them. He was at this point when he's writing to the Philippians. He, he was in a Roman prison. And it was, from my studies, it was dirty. And it was dark. And it was a sickening place. It's a place that people went to die. And his circumstances of life were not real great. They were not appealing. It's not something he would have chosen. Because nobody would choose prison, even if it's a government prison. But he did have a choice that took precedence. Should he just sit and wait to die, like so many of the prisoners do? that if he did that, he would have Jesus when he took his that was okay with him. Or should he remain useful to God? Should he continue the furtherance of ministry? And it was a trying decision. Rut, rut. Which do I choose? Paul decided that either way he'd be happy to be with Jesus forever starting right now in this prison to die tomorrow to keep making disciples for Jesus. Either way, he would be happy. Just so Christ 
will be exalted now as always in my body. If your, if your Bible is still open, this is verse 20 and 21. Whether by life or by death, for Christ and dying is to gain. We face many decisions daily about our family, our jobs. What are we going to do? Am I going to sweep or am I going to dust? I, I have a lot of hard choices, folks. My life is, is, is just amazingly terrible. I'm just kidding. Um, but so I always win-win, like Paul's choice was. Um, in our eyes... Sometimes it's rut against rut. You pick the least worst of the choices. And we've done that before. We've all gone to the doctor and been told something and we have to pick the least invasive or the least worst possible outcome that he gives us when he gives us those choices. But Paul, we all want to make sound decisions. We want to make wise Christian decisions. We want our choices, the, the, the decisions we make from our choices, we want them to be for our welfare, but also we want them to be pleasing in God's sight. It's one of the things that Paul puts before us today in this scripture that I just read. How I make sound Christian decisions. Has anybody ever struggled with that? I've got a choice I've got to make today. And how? Is this going to glorify God the best? Which side is going to glorify Him the most? I struggle with that sometimes. I'm, I, none of y'all apparently do. But if you have your Bible open, look at verse 22. This, the answer to this question is, is going to be found in this passage. And, and uh, what Paul is doing here, he's kind of having a brief question Q&A here. And, and this is going to uncover four factors that's going to influence our Christian decision making. And <coughs> it says, for I know that through... to shame in any way will be exalted now as he was convinced if he remained he would glorify God and he was convinced that if he died the people that had been following him would make sure God was glorified in his death. So either way, Paul was okay with this. But first, he wanted, whether he was in prison or free, he wanted to please God. And friends, that is the first step towards making a sound Christian decision. Is this going to please God? I have I've been struggling with something this, this week that, that me being who I am, I wanted to tend to it because that's, I just want to make things right when they're not. Um, sometimes that's a, a good characteristic and sometimes it's not. It gets you in trouble sometimes. And, and I really prayed. I said, Lord, this could go sideways so quickly. And, and, and for whatever reason... I've stayed quiet. So I've decided that the will of God, it was not going to please God for me to step into this situation. And um, so, so I've stayed out of it. And, and I think that's the biggest question we have to ask. Is this going to please you? Is this going to glorify you in any way? And if it's not, then we need to step back. And so my question is, do we want to please Jesus? And I think we all do. And do we want to accept the life I think we all do, or we wouldn't be sitting here, or we wouldn't be listening this morning? There's, there's, if you haven't read it, uh, if you want some, some good reading, C.S. Lewis, you can't go wrong with him, and he had a book, Mere Christianity. And he wrote that every time you make a choice, you are turning 
the central part of you. Every time you decide to do or not to do something, something in you changes. And, and that part chooses to be just a little bit different than it was before. And, and it, it's taking your life as a whole with all of your enormous that you're going to make in your lifetime, you slowly turn this thing in you either into a heavenly creature or into a hellish creature. So here's a lesson about choosing. When we choose Christ first, we begin to know and we begin to understand Christ's likeness firsthand. When we choose Christ, it becomes the central part of us and we become different than the Lord. I love to pray, but often I don't know what to say when I pray or I don't know how to pray what I'm deep in my heart. So there's times at home in my cozy corner I, I just tell God I don't know what to pray. And I ask the Holy Spirit to speak up. And then I try to pattern my prayer after Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. I want to be more. I want to make choices that please you, not my will. Father, your will be done. That's the Jesus prayer. And every decision we have, how would our life look different? The reality is that we begin to want Jesus. We begin to want to be more like Jesus. And our decisions will be more like decisions that Jesus makes. Secondly, notice in the scripture that Christian decision making is influenced not only by what we want, but by who we depend on. If you look at verse 26 in the is so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. It's boasting of Christ. It's boasting about Christ. It's about giving the glory to God. Jesus depended on the... If Jesus depended on God, who... who Paul writes later in chapter 2 uh, of, of Philippians, Taking the very nature of a servant. A servant depends on his master for everything. And I know you're all thinking right now. Of course I depend on God. Who else do you think I'm praying to? Well, I know that you pray to the triune God. And that's not really the issue here. It is the expectations of those prayers. Is the attitude of those prayers, the, the, of what you're speaking that matters. My question to you is, do you pray with the servant of Jesus Christ? Do you, do you pray knowing that your master is going to take care of anything? Think of a master, uh, a, a master of a servant. That servant had to depend on that master for food, for clothing, for somewhere to live. Do totally depend on God for everything in our life. If you talk to a farmer, they totally depend on God to take control of the weather. So some of us maybe depend on God more than others. When Jesus prayed, here's the difference in when Jesus prayed and the way that I pray sometimes. I'm not calling any of you out. I'm calling me. When Jesus prayed, he expected an answer. I have to confess, sometimes when I pray, I'm just saying words I think God needs to hear. I don't know that I always expect an answer, but we should. Jesus always expected an answer, and if we're going to be more like Jesus, we've got to be like Jesus and leave the kind, expect an answer, and leave the kind of answer we're going to get in the hands of God. It is appropriate to make our requests known. 
I, I don't think I don't think we would be giving God um, the credit. We would be, have him in a little box that he doesn't want to be in if we don't pray for for Lindsay to get better, for Troy to get better. We prayed very hard that Hoppy would still be with us here today. God hears our prayers, but we got to put His will. We've got we've got to let it turn out as He. His will. We've got to put it back in His hands. It is so much smarter to leave the way that God's going to answer up to God. It is he, He's been known to come up with some better answers, I know He has for me, than what we would come up with. I know that, that we all admit to knowing this. However, I ask you, but do we believe what we say when we pray? Do we expect God to answer us? And if we don't, that is the first thing we've got to change about ourselves when we're praying. Because when Jesus prayed, he expected an answer. All of our plans for our family ministry, our relationships, they need room for the miracle work power of God. Remember, if, if you're covering every angle of the situation, then you have put yourself in charge, and you're not depending on God to take over. Thirdly, Christian decision-making depends on your attitude towards the body of Christ. Looking at verses 27 and <clears throat> only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whether I come and see you or whether I am absent and hear about you I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel and are in no way intimidated by your opponents for them this is evidence of their destruction but of your salvation and this is God's doing. When we see this as a that requires a different kind of lens, Jesus is worthy of our worship. But Paul knew that there was a chance that he would never see daylight as a free man again. So he wrote to them these words. ...are not made... Everything that we do affects other people, kind of like the butterfly effect that became so popular in the late 70s and 80s. It is especially so in the body of Christ, and we are that body, friends. When I talk about the body of Christ, I'm talking about us. What is it that the body chooses? Well, I know one thing that God wants us to choose is unity. He wants us to all be on the same page about Him, about His creation, and about one another. One spirit, one man. The church of Jesus Christ is to be a united church. An attitude of selfishness or carelessness does not belong. It is like, it is like my hand deciding that it was going to go on permanent vacation. And, and, and it, it, it was not coming. Back. Well, if I don't have an, a, a hand, I can't get food to my mouth. And so the, my entire body will suffer if my hand goes on strike. It is that way with all of us, with believers, who imagine that their place of worship or, or Bible study can be, fulfilled, can be filled by somebody else. Well, you can't. When you're not here, you're missed. When we're working on projects and you're not a part of the body, you're missed. And sometimes you can't. And that's okay. That's why the rest of us fill in. But no one should ever feel like, if I'm not there, it's okay. Because somebody else is. Unity whole body is working together. I need my hand to put food to my mouth. And as you can see, I use my hand often to do that. I enjoy my food. The church also chooses to honor Jesus in industry. To contend means to work. Never intend to limp along just on short rations. Every 
member can make a contribution to the body. And if you really want to help, and, and you can find a way. And if you have trouble finding that way, then ask. Because I can tell you, nothing gives a pastor more joy than to someone to come up and, and ask, I would like to fill in one of your blanks. Nominating committee will immediately work on that desire for you. Industry and intrepidity. To be intrepid is to be courageous. Be courageous. Christians in Paul's day had to be very courageous. Paul says that the body of Christ that is standing unified and is industrious will be courageous. Frightened by the opposition. And we've had a lot of opposition over the past year and a half. And I think we have walked through that battle. And as I said earlier, we have come out winners. We have come out with victory. The word comes in intrepid. It comes from the ancient Greek word, kuro, which literally translated means to spit. And I had to think about how in the world does that mean anything about courage? But then I got to thinking about the camel. When the camel is surprised or frightened, he will spit at his enemy. And usually the enemy, being another animal, will turn and run. Application is simple. Whatever happens in life, the Christian that is standing united with the church, and I'm talking capital C church, working diligently in the kingdom to bring more disciples to Christ, will not only be unduly frightened by anything. Now, that is a freedom that is worth having, friends. And finally, your will. Servant index is simply a measure of your willingness to serve, to follow Jesus on his terms, not our terms. The theme of this entire message I hope you have picked up on is choosing to be Christ-like. Jesus suffered, and so will his followers. We must be willing to choose following Christ despite the cost, or we cannot be considered worthy to be called disciples. Jesus said that if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And so the crux of the matter is, are you willing to say? Paul was. And he warned the church in his many letters that one of the greatest gifts that God has entrusted 28 is the privilege to for him. In their day, it was arenas with lions. For us, it means choosing church over sleeping in on Sunday mornings or, or tithe over treasures or worship over worldliness and outreach over self. Paul was speaking to the church with joy, even though he was being tortured in prison. He knew and he loved his God, and he wanted everyone to know that love. Telling this love story was more important than living a life that was pleasing to the flesh. So he preached and he wrote letters for people to read what we want, what we and our it's all working together to produce joy for our lives. So the question is, do you want it? Help in deciding this vital issue. Consider this scenario. We go to the county or the state fair. We're all standing in front of a booth. We've all been there where you throw a ball at the cans and you get a prize. Well, this particular booth, they've, they've got cans stacked up. And, and if you get a ball into a blue can, for every ball you get in a blue can, it's worth $5 each. The yellow cans are worth $500 each. Cans are worth $50,000 each. No tricks. Which can are you going to throw at? Life simple. It's simplified when it comes to making decisions. Jesus is the red can. Love him. Depend on him. 
love and work for his church. Serve, because it will produce genuine joy no matter what the circumstances. What will you choose? I'm going for the red can. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you are able, will you stand and join me on page 175? <clears throat> Please and glorify Christ in all decisions that we make. 